This is the My Michelle Live podcast. Here's Michelle. Uh, this is the one segment during the week that comes with a, a warning. It could get rowdy. Warning could get rowdy, and it will because it's time for sports. Sports! sports. Red Dog 55! Red Dog 55! Sports it is. Sports it is. These guys just don't know when to stop do they i don't know and they shouldn't stop because they're our friends in the afternoon as well let me introduce you to the round table well he's a coach he uh, is former chaplain for our seattle sounders he is a pastor and he's an all-around cool guy garrick Payne. we have with us rich hallstrom veteran sports reporter he is also an author of thunder sports network Brent Baker, he is a sports writer, sports photographer, and uh, we're going to have a big reveal uh, not coming coming fairly soon of the title, the front page of his new book. We're looking forward to that. Joshua McMillan, our sports authority, and he is our manna on the street. And we have with us an old friend of mine. He is in the, in the Football Hall of Fame for the AFA. He is a coach, a great defensive coach, absolutely can't be beat. He is Tom Fisher. Guys, happy Friday to you. Happy Blue Friday, Michelle. Happy Friday. I don't care Michelle. what color it is. <laughs> 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 Seahawks five and oh five and oh five and oh five and oh but come on Seahawks can we just have a come to Jesus meeting can we just like collectively go through therapy because I'm finding this relationship with the Seattle Seahawks to be personally abusive thank you very much I mean come on what on earth <laughs> well, talk to what, me Rich that's what happens when you don't play four quarters that's exactly what happened <laughs> that's exactly what okay. happened and the uh, Seahawks uh Took it down to the wire, but Russell Wilson once again showed why he's the MVP top candidate, and uh, defense made the stop when they needed to. That's MVP. what it comes down to. And what it comes down to, defense made the stop when it had to. Russell Wilson made another MVP performance audition on Sunday Night Football, <laughs> and the Seahawks are somewhat lucky to be 5-0. and oh. Yeah. Oh, Brent and I were goodness. talking – during the week yeah. and he was rattling off all these statistics uh, maybe you can share brent you know in terms of the particular final touchdown drive and all that and, and i was um commenting how you know that you've got an amazing quarterback when it just seems like a regular day at the office for him uh, what, <laughs> what were some of those stats brent do you remember i think it was something like the third time in 20 years that a quarterback had taken a team on the final drive inside the last two minutes it started inside the 10 yard line something like that I mean it's crazy and yet when the Seahawks got the ball back it was like okay Russell's going to do his thing I'm more surprised than not at this point if they don't win a game like that I still I don't know I can we could just get back to <laughs> Michelle needs therapy <laughs> you're not alone Michelle I think most of our city <laughs> right uh, needs therapy Josh in. Yeah, I mean, that Seahawks game was great. And to be fair, the Seahawks gave us a couple games earlier in the year that weren't quite as close, or at least didn't feel close. They felt controlled the whole time. That one, I mean, that one was a game that felt like a trap game going into it. That felt like one of the ones that we might just drop off that you didn't didn't want to, you know, because Minnesota, they're a good team. And they got a lot of good players over there, and they, they look to have the talent that they need to to be able to upset the Seahawks. But Russell Wilson pulled it off me and, you know, DK Metcalf being a beast down the stretch. Russell Wilson making time in the pocket on that last drive. It was and the defense. They stepped up. You know, they, they made a couple of big stops again. You know, this defense is bend, bend a lot, 
break sometimes, but not break in the in the big time. And how many times have we ended up down on the goal line there this season where the defense needed to Three. make a big stop <laughs> and they did make the big stop. And by the way, too many KJ times. Wright, KJ Wright playing like a madman out there. He moved over to Sam linebacker. And last week, he almost had three interceptions that like bounced off yeah. his hands. This time, he goes up. He's like, you know what? I'm going to drop the two hands on the ball and it bouncing off. I'm just going to put one hand up there and make the interception. And he did. So apparently, he's better with one hand than two. Maybe he's been practicing with Shaquem Griffin on that. Uh, but that is- was amazing. Did you all just go, <gasps> what? Yeah, yeah, totally. yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I call him Spider Man. Oh, oh my gosh, guy. guys! It it was great. Uh, but here here is another problem that I had. I couldn't get a hold of Josh. Apparently, now that he's married, he has a family. He doesn't watch live games anymore, so he's totally off. So all social media isn't answering anything because he doesn't what? want any spoilers. Right, right. <laughs> and the same thing happened. I'm calling you out, Josh. When we were, when I was watching uh, college ball, the OU Texas game, and Josh, you are a big bo- oh, Sooner man. Boomer. That game, are you kidding me? Quad OT. I'm watching that, going, oh, wow, oh, wow. I mean, what a what a game that was. Did you finally get caught up, Josh? I haven't watched the whole thing yet. I have not had a chance to get fully caught up oh, this don't weekend. Tell me long. No, yeah, okay, no, I won't. No, no. I won't get you excited that Oklahoma <laughs> pulled it off in the last minute or anything. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, with the Seahawks game this weekend, I'll have a little more time to catch up on the games I need to catch up on. <laughs> yeah, this was kind of like this is going to be like being in lockdown again. Do you remember those days? We're going to be talking about that for years, guys. Do you remember back when there were no sports? When you were, what all we could do was look forward to Josh talking about marbles or something. I don't know. Hey, it was Jelly's just like, marble <laughs> run YouTube. <laughs> Barbula One Racing, top tier uh, entertainment. No uh, esports. So, no yeah, so, sports. You know, I don't know why you're hating on the esports, man. That is some premium entertainment out there. There's some really, really good teams that are a lot of fun to watch in a variety of games. Well, fair enough. Uh, Fish, I want to have you weigh in on what do you think the rest of the season is going to look like for our Seattle Seahawks? I, I think we're going to stay the course. The defense is going to get, you know, offensively, de- the defense is going to get tighter, a little better. Hopefully we can get a, a, a better pass rusher maybe in the game uh, to get pressure on the other team's quarterback. Uh, if we can do that in like our trade deadline or whatever, I think we'll be a lot more successful defensively. Or if we could just stay really healthy and everyone else gets tested positive for COVID-19, then, well, you know, it's like a war of attrition. And that's something that's happening in sports, fellas. I mean, we're seeing that. Cam Newton tested positive. The uh, New England Patriots had to cancel practices. Uh, We just, we're, we're seeing more people testing positive. It trickling through teams, uh, teams having to pull out of games. So, you know, this is where we're looking. What's it going to look like, Rich? It's going to be a scheduling juggling match the entire season. But I think the NFL has done the wise thing. You know, they're playing every day of the week, and they just want to get through the regular season and get to the playoffs. That's why they also canceled the 2021 Pro Bowl and are going to do that next. Are going to do that next year? Wise move by the NFL. Don't stretch yourself too thin. Concentrate on getting through the regular season, make the necessary adjustments in the schedule because they do not want to play 18 or 19 weeks of regular season football. That's what this is all about. Let's get through the regular season. Let's get to the playoffs so we can ultimately get to the Super Bowl, Brent. Well, I think yeah. for, one, for one thing, the Pro Bowl, uh, they can do away with that <laughs> anyway. But I think I think that having that, week there for flexibility should they need to push some games back will be good but i wouldn't be surprised if the super bowl has to get moved either because we're just getting into the cold weather season you're starting to see more of these covid positive tests pop up and even without a big outbreak like tennessee had um, you're seeing the the willingness to move games around even with one or two positives Um, so it's going to be interesting to see if the pace for the COVID positive tests pick up 
um, if you're going to see teams having to forfeit games if they find that they violated protocols um, or how much juggling they'll do. Um, you could even see, uh, you know, I, I could even see maybe some regular season games getting canceled and uh, moved around so you can get divisional games in and that kind of thing. Uh, but it, it's just, you know, we haven't dealt with this before. So I think everyone's uh, just trying to find a, a way, way, like Rich said, to get through the regular season and then maybe, maybe bubble up for the playoffs. All right, guys, we're going to pick this up in just a few moments, and we'll talk more about sports. We've got to talk about the Sounders. Not a great week to talk about the Sounders. Where did they go? Where did our team go? What was going on? Thank God for the Seahawks redeeming that Sunday afternoon. We're going to uh, talk about the Lakers and some of the aftermath of them winning the NBA Finals, and we will talk more sports with my roundtable of fellas. Third quarter sports timeout.
For more fun, go to MinorShowLive.com.